All right, we are following some breaking news just into the Fox 59 newsroom, and it is a sad update to share on a Richmond police officer who was shot earlier this month. The department, the Richmond Police Department, says Sierra Burton will be taken off life support tomorrow. The 28-year-old officer was shot in the head during a traffic stop in early August and has been fighting for her life ever since. Well, Indiana State Police still aren't saying why they are searching a portion of the Wabash River up in Peru. Police say Christopher Clairbout strangled his mother and then killed his father inside a home last month. As for the Old Rob Elementary, the city is going to tear it down. Officials are working on a plan to turn it into a memorial. The Indiana Secretary of State is hoping a new paper ballot audit system will make Hoosiers feel a little bit more secure when they vote. A group of environmental advocates are pushing a major utility company to get rid of coal-powered plants in southern Indiana. The Amtrak company temporarily shut down three long-distance routes today. It's a preemptive move ahead of a potentially massive strike involving railroad workers over things like sick time and attendance. All right, topping our news tonight on CBS 4 News at 11, certainly a blue Christmas for the Indianapolis Colts. Our post-game coverage of the Colts continues now. T.Y. Hilton is at the podium there in Arizona. Let's listen in. Former police officer has been found not guilty on charges connected to the raid that killed Breonna Taylor. And we have new information on what led up to a woman's murder inside an apartment complex in Indianapolis. People in Connorsville are shaken up after after two bodies have been found in just a matter of weeks, both under suspicious circumstances. Suspects all under the age of 20 are accused of targeting cell phone stores across the metro area. Today, Senator Mike Braun met with farmers at the state fairgrounds to get their input. Zachary Pettis was shot in the neck while watching drag racing in this industrial complex here on the northwest side. After being shot, his father drove him to this fire station just a couple miles away, but by then, it was too late. The scariest thing for some people is that this is the second time a home here in Fishers has been shot up this month. The other incident happened just a couple miles from here. State police initially started the search sort of in the area just right here where we are now, but the search has since moved a little bit farther downstream and they still seem to be focusing on the north side of the river. Basically everything inside is charred. Only the outer walls are standing really at this point. Another reason is what you see going on here right here. They are still putting out fire crews or putting out hot spots, which has made it dangerous uh, for crews to get in the building. Jimin Shah appeared before a judge this afternoon here at the Tippecanoe County Jail. He is facing one count of first degree murder and an automatic not guilty plea was entered on his behalf. Jimin Shaw had nothing to say as he was taken to court this afternoon. The last time he was here, he told reporters this. I was blackmailed. However, today we weren't allowed to ask him questions. During his hearing, the judge read him his charge and ordered him to be held without bond. Last Wednesday, police say Shaw stabbed Varun Chetta multiple times in the head and neck inside their dorm room. Investigators say Shaw then called 911 to report the killing, and when police got there, they found Chetta sitting in a pool of blood and Shaw with blood on his clothes. His motive is still unknown. It's definitely shocking. Um, it's just something that doesn't happen all the time. Right. It's, uh, really never on this campus. More than a week later, Purdue students are still in shock. A memorial to Chetta has continued to grow at the unfinished P on the campus. Junior Adeline Hawk stopped to pay her respects today. People are feeling like, you know, it should be forgotten and that we should still keep it in mind. And I don't know, I guess a reminder to be grateful for every day. Shaw has hired Lafayette defense attorney Kyle Cray to represent him, but he's not talking either. Mr. Cray, anything to say? Defense has no comment this time in this case. Okay. What? He said that he was black. Black male, can you explain? The prosecutor's office here has not responded to our request for comment. Shaw is scheduled to be back in court in December. If convicted, the judge says he could face up to 65 years in prison. February 13th, 2017. 13-year-old Abby Williams and 14-year-old Libby German had gone on a walk on Delphi's historic trails and a family member was on his way to pick them up. He was getting close to there to pick them up. He'd been calling her. She wasn't answering. After calling Libby dozens of times with no response, her grandparents Mike and Becky Patty, along with other family and friends, went searching for the two best friends. Stay in a group. As the night progressed, it just continually got more worried, you know, that something's not right here. The next day, police and hundreds of volunteers scoured the deeply wooded area. And then a phone call came that would change everything. One of my friends that was with me hunting, her husband was in another group. 
that was going along on the south side of the creek. He called his wife, and then she come running out and said, hey, they found him, they found him. I remember looking over saying, are they okay? I mean, I, I hadn't, and she wouldn't answer me. About that time, the coroner's van came by, and that's when it became real. The girls had been murdered. Details about how they were killed have never been released publicly. I almost lost sense of what, our, what reality was going on. I mean, it was hard to fathom what we were going through. The discovery set off a massive police investigation involving local, state, and federal officials. Within a week, police released evidence found on Libby's cell phone, including a picture of the cold-blooded killer and this chilling recording. Then five months later came this sketch. Tips flooded in, but still no answers. More than two years after the murders in April 2019, police took the investigation in a new direction. To the killer, who may be in this room, we believe you are hiding in plain sight. Cops released this new sketch of the killer, saying they believe he's younger and is from or visits Delphi regularly. Investigators also put out this video taken from Libby's cell phone and an extended audio clip. In the past five years, several potential suspects have emerged. The most recent coming this past December when Indiana State Police asked for information about a social media account named Anthony Schatz. That account solicited nude photos of teenage girls between 2016 and 2017. 27-year-old Keegan Klein had been tied to that account when he was arrested a week after the girls were murdered. However, ISP hasn't said how or if that account is connected to the case. We're stuck at February 14, 2017 when we found him. We're still there. We don't get to move on and grieve because we don't know why. For Mike and Becky, Libby will always be 14. She would be a freshman in college this year and should be standing next to her sister Kelsey at her wedding this summer. She should be Kelsey's maid of honor. And she's not going to be. They say all they can do is wait and hope someone comes forward with information. Because even five years later, after an unimaginable loss, the one thing they still have is hope. So once he's caught and we know that he can't hurt anybody else, then, then we can start grieving and then maybe we can figure out how to move on with our lives. In Delphi, Max Lewis, Fox 59 News.